Hello, welcome to Valve Channel. I'm Stephen. API 600 is the most comprehensive gate valve standard in valve industry. It covered a lot of information for engineers going to design a gate valve. And also, gate valve is the most common valve tape working in the flow control system. So in this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to use API 600 to design a gate valve valve body. And also, I'm going to show five basic steps to draw a gate valve valve body blueprint from API 600 valve standard. In this video, we are going to design a gate valve, which is 4 inch 600 pressure class. When we are going to design a valve, the first part we are going to draw for the blueprint is the valve flange. According to the standard API 600, the flange standard is coming from ASME B16.5. So we were going to use this standard to draw the valve body flange first. The first step is going to draw the flange. We were going to use the ASME B6.5 to draw this flange. One flange at least have seven different dimensions. So let me show you how to use this standard to find the correct seven different dimensions for the valve body flange. Here is the standard ASME B6.5. We were going to use this standard to design the flange. This table is for the flange connection table. This table is 600 pressure class flange table. Our design, the gate valve size is 4 inch. So we can find the first size outside diameter of the flange, which is approximately 273. So we were going to use 273 millimeter to design the gate valve flange outside the diameter. And the next size is the diameter of the board circle which is approximate to 216. So the ball circle diameter is 216. And the next is the number of the board, which is 8. This flange totally have 8 board. And each board hole approximate to 25. So this flange totally have 8 hole for the board. And each board hole is 25. Next size is for the gasket size. This flange is designed by RF tape flange, so we don't need concern about other kind of design flange for different kind of gasket. RF flange for the gasket size, we just concern two dimensions. One is the gasket step diameter, and another is highest of the gasket step. The highest of the gasket step, which is 7, that is coming from its illustration, because if the flange, the pressure is 400 or higher than 400. The flange is RF flange. The gasket step height is 7 mm. And the gasket step diameter are represented by R. So we can find the R from the table for the different gasket. This table is for any kind of pressure flange. The size is 4 inch. So R is approximate to 157. So the gasket step diameter is approximate to 157. The next size is for the flange thickness. According to this standard, the flange thickness, we are going to use TF to represent. According to the table for the 600 pressure class flange, 4 inch flange, 4 inch flange, the flange thickness approximate to 38 millimeter. So we are going to use 38 mm to design this flange. The last size for the flange is the flange inside diameter. This flange inside diameter also is the valve body inside diameter. According to the standard API 600, the valve body inside diameter are coming from another standard which is ASME B16.34. According to the standard ASME B16.34 inside diameter table, 4 inch valve 600 pressure class, the valve inside diameter approximate to 102. So we are going to use 102 to design the flange inside diameter. So that is the first step for the flange. Let's continue to the next step. Step 2 is for the valve length and the valve wall thickness. According to the standard API 600, the valve length determined by the standard ASME B16.10. According to the standard ASME B 16.10, 600 pressure class valve, valve tape, gate valve, valve size 4 inch. The valve length 
approximator to 432. So we are going to use 432 to design the valve length. And the next is the valve wall thickness. Valve wall thickness are coming from standard API 600. API 600 have a table for the minimum wall thickness. According to this table, 600 pressure class gate valve. Valve size 4 inch. The valve wall thickness is 16 millimeter. 16 millimeter. So we were going to use 16 millimeter to design the valve wall thickness. So that is a step two for the valve length and the valve wall thickness. Next step is for the valve gate and the valve seat. Here is the valve gate. In standard API 600, the valve gate is a wedge form, and also the degree for the wedge is 5 degree. Beside the valve gate is two valve seat. Two valve seat will cooperate with the valve gate to seal the pressure in different sides, upstream and downstream. That is the basic principle for a gate valve. We are going to design the valve seat first. We already get the valve seat inside diameter, which is equal with the valve body inside diameter, and equal with the flange inside diameter, which is 102. And the valve seat wall thickness at least is 10 mm or more than 10 mm. So we add 20 mm to the inside diameter, we get the outside diameter, which is 122. To make this valve seat more stronger, we choose 125 to design the valve seat outside diameter. So that is the valve seat inside diameter and the valve seat outside diameter. And then we're going to determine the valve seat height. The highest of the valve seat is the twice size of the valve seat wall thickness. So we use 20 mm to design the valve seat the highest. So we get the highest of the valve seat inside diameter and the outside diameter about the valve seat. Next step is going to design the valve seat width of the ceiling face. In gate valve industry, most gate valve, the valve seat width of the ceiling face is around 6 mm or 7 mm. That is dependent on the size of the valve body. This valve body is 4 inch, so we decided to use 5 mm to design the valve seat ceiling face wise. If the valve body is 10 inch or 20 inch, maybe we're going to use 7 mm or even 9 mm to design the valve seat ceiling face wise. So that is for the valve seat. Next, uh, we are going to design the valve gate. When we're going to design a valve, the most important part is going to design the valve ceiling face. Because the valve ceiling face is the part going to seal the pressure inside the pipe. Gate valve is the same. Gate valve ceiling face are located in the valve gate and the valve seat. Here is the valve gate ceiling face. And here is the valve seat ceiling face. Valve gate ceiling face will cooperate with the valve seat ceiling face to seal the pressure inside the pipe. The most important thing we need to understand for the valve gate, which is when we're going to use the valve gate in the flow control system. Every time we open and close the valve gate, the valve gate ceiling face will go into rubbing against with the valve seat ceiling face. So after a lot of time open and close the valve, the valve gate ceiling face and the valve seat ceiling face will be wear out. And then the distance between two valve seats will get bigger and the valve gate will get thinner, so the valve gate will move to the downside. One day, the valve gate ceiling face even cannot touch the valve seat ceiling face. The valve will be leak. So to make the valve gate are more durable, so we make the valve gate, the ceiling face, much wider than the valve seat ceiling face. So that is the reason in API 600 standard, it already gave us a design factor for us to concern about the this kind of situation, which is called a wire travel. So for example, this valve we are going to design, which is 4 inch. 4 inch, that is equal 100 dn. So for 100 dn gate valve, the wire travel is 3.3. .3. So that means if your valve seat ceiling face is 5 mm, your valve gate ceiling face must be 5 mm at 3.3 .3 mm, that is equal 8.3 mm. So we were going to use 8.3 mm to design the valve gate ceiling face according to the standard API 600. But we want this gate valve are more durable, have a very good quality. So we decided to double this design factor from 3.3 .3 to 7 mm. 
So we were going to use 7 millimeter to design the gear valve wear travel. So 7 millimeter at the valve seat sitting face, 5 millimeter, that is equal 12 millimeter. So we were going to use 12 millimeter to design the valve gate sitting face. So that is the basic principle for us to design the valve gate sitting face. And the next design factor is the valve gate downside thickness. Because the valve gate are very important, we're going to hold the pressure inside the pipe. We don't want the valve gate are so thin, are so softer by the pressure. So we are going to design the valve gate downside thickness according to the valve wall thickness. We were going to use 1.5 ton valve wall thickness to design the valve gate downside thickness. So valve wall thickness according to a standard API 600, we already get it the design factor which is 16. 16 multiply 1.5 that is equal 24. To make the valve gate more stronger we decided to use 28 to design the valve gate downside thickness. So that is the basic principle for designing a gate valve gate. And then we put this design in the center of the valve body. We already designed for the valve gate, valve gate, valve seat and the valve flange and the valve links. So let's go to the next. So we already designed the valve gate and the valve seat, and then we connect all the line with the valve seat. We can get this blueprint. The distance between the downside of the valve gate and the valve body, this space are very important. Because when we're going to use the gate valve, we open and close the gate. The gate sitting face we're going to rubbing against with the seat sitting face. So after a lot of time, two sitting face will be wear out. The distance between two valve seats were getting wider. The valve gate was getting thinner. So the valve gate will move to downside. So that is the reason why we des designed the valve gate sitting face are much wider than the valve seat sitting face. So we have the wear travel for the valve gate sitting face. So this space at least must contain enough space for the wear travel. So most of the time we will double the wear travel to design this space. The wear travel for this gate valve is 7 mm, so we decided to use 14 mm to design the height of the distance between the downside, the valve gate, to the valve body. So that is for this place to design the valve body. And the next step is going to design the valve cavity diameter. The cavity diameter, the function are very simple. The cavity just need contain enough space to hold the valve gate inside. Before we already design the valve gate, the cavity must contain enough space for the valve gate. First, we're going to draw a three view of the valve gate, like this. We already get the valve gate, so we can draw a three view of the valve gate. And then, we're going to use the top view of the valve gate to design the diameter of the cavity. So we will put the valve gate top view in the top of the valve body. And then the each side at least it will left around 10 mm space for the valve gate. So the valve gate can put inside the valve body. Because this valve is 4 inch, so 8.5 mm space are enough for the valve gate to put inside. So we can get the valve body cavity, the diameter is 145. So that is the valve body cavity size coming from 100. 45. So and then we're going to draw the valve body outside diameter, which is at the valve body wall thickness. So we can get this kind of blueprint. And then we can go to the next step. The last step is going to design the valve body cavity flange and the height of the valve body cavity flange. Here is the valve body cavity flange. We are going to connect it with the valve cover to seal the pressure inside the valve body. When we're going to design the cavity flange, two things we need to concern about it. First is, the cavity flange and the side flange cannot interrupt with each other. That means, when we're going to machine the valve body, use lace, the lace tool will go into turning and facing the flange front side and back side. So two flange must contain enough space for the lace tool getting inside. So that is the reason why we design the cavity flange 
must are higher than the side flange or side diameter. So this distance at least uh, more than 15 to let the laser torque get inside to facing the back side of the cavity flange. And also the outside diameter of the cavity flange must be uh, behind the back of the side flange back. So it has enough space for the laser torque getting inside to facing the back of the side flange. So that is the first thing we need to concern about it. The next thing we need to concern about the cavity flange, which is the number of the bolts and the size of the bolt hole for the cavity flange. Because the cavity flange will hold the same pressure with the side flange. So maybe we just copy the side flange number of the bolts and the size of the bolt hole to the cavity flange. That is possible, because in that kind of situation, the cavity flange must can hold the same pressure with the side flange. But when you are going to design a valve body, this kind of rule, maybe it is impossible. Because most of the time, the side flange, the bolt hole are too big for the cavity. When you are going to use the side flange bolt hole for the cavity flange, the cavity outside, the cavity flange outside diameter may be too big. It may interrupt with the side flange. When you're going to machine to flange, use lace. The lace tool going to turning or facing the back of the side flange, or turning facing the back of the cavity flange. The tool may be interrupted by another flange. So that is the reason we want to make the cavity flange the outside diameter a little bit smaller. It will left enough space for the lace tool going to machine to flange. So in this kind of situation, most of the time we have one rule, which is we were going to use one level smaller than the side flange hole diameter for the cavity flange. This 4 inch 600 pressure class gate valve side, di side flange bottle hole diameter is 25 mm. So we were going to use 22 mm for the cavity flange bottle hole diameter. And then we add 4 more bolts than the side flange. The side flange has 8 bolt hole, so we use 12 bolt hole for the cavity flange because the cavity flange needs to hold the same pressure with the side flange, so it must contain more bolts than the side flange because the bolt size already is smaller one level. And one thing are very important, which is whatever what kind of flange you gonna design, the flange, the number of the bolt must be the multiply of four. For example, the flange can contain 4 bolts, or 8 bolts, or 12 bolts, or 16 bolts. You cannot design a flange which has 10 bolts, or 15 bolts. In that kind of situation, if you design that kind of flange, when the workers are going to mount in two flanges together, sometimes two flanges cannot mount in the correct direction. So that is the basic principle for us to design a cavity flange. And also, we need to design the cavity flange. The wall thickness is the same with the side flange. We still use the 38 to design the cavity flange wall thickness. So after five basic steps, we can get a valve body like this. And then we still need to put some details on the valve body. Like the chamfer for the flange, the reinforced reed for the valve body to make the body more stronger, and the valve gate guider on the valve body and also include the casting for the valve size, valve pressure, valve material, and the manufacturing logo on the valve body. So after all those details, you will put the dimensions on the valve body, on the blueprint. So you can use any kind of design software to design a gate valve, valve body like this one. So that is for today. I hope you like it. If you like my channel, please subscribe. I will upload the video every week to talk about anything about the valve. Thank you for watching. See you next video. Bye bye.